All right, <clears throat> here we go. Um, I am doing a little tutorial here to show you how I typically will um, schedule in services. So uh, we're looking at the main plans plans page right now. And what I typically do, you can see I'm scheduled out to November 22nd. But I like to actually schedule using templates. And so I'm going to show you how I edit the templates. And then uh, a template looks very much like a normal plan, except for it doesn't have the time of the service and there's no times in it. It's just a template with details. So that way you don't have to create the information from scratch all the time. So you can see here, there's November 22nd. If I wanted to add a new plan, I would click add a plan. Uh, and let me back up a little bit. This um, are folders in which we work in. So you might not be on this page right away. So let me take you all the way up to the top view which is a manual community church, and we have folders for different areas of ministry. Um, children's ministry is right over here, and if anybody from children's ministry who's going to be doing scheduling wants to look at this video, this is going to be very similar to what you would do in children's ministry. I'm just going to go over to the production team, and right here we have weekend services, okay? So you'll add a plan, and then you can choose the number of services you want to add. Uh, remember, once you create, if you were to do 12, if you make a change, you're going to have to make those changes in all 12 services. So th really think about how many services you want to add. If you want to do four and then take a look, make sure it's good, and then do another four, that's fine if you want to do it that way. Um, it's going to copy the times from the last service that is scheduled, so November 12th. If all the times are correct in November 12th, it's fine. We can use that. Um, and then this service we want to start on Sunday, November 29th, which is the last Sunday. Coincidentally, it's also a fifth Sunday, so be on guard for that. Um, and since this is going to be the last Sunday, I don't have a, um, a fifth Sunday schedule, uh, but I used to use the default template here. Um, I'm actually, for the first Sunday of the month, I use the communion template because that has the number of people I need to serve communion, and I'll show you that in a little bit. And then I also have the divided worship template, which is new and recent, um, and so I just made some changes to that. So uh, I'll show you all those templates in a second. So we're going to get out of there. And to get to those templates, I'm just going to go um, right over here to the right, this little gear icon, click on templates. And now you can see those three templates. There's the communion template, default template, and divided worship set template. So let's take a look at the, uh, we'll go in order. We'll look at the communion template. Now any changes, like uh, if there's um, the number of people serving or the, if I want to create a new position, I'm going to come in and edit the template. That way I can go in and just add this information. If it's going to happen on a regular basis, I'm going to edit the template so it looks and feels the way I want it to without having to make those same edits every week. Now this is the typical plan. You can see at the top, here's where I named the template. If you click in there, you can rename it. Here's all the order of service items, and you can move any of this stuff around, these headers. Um, I keep this worship set area um, generic, and I just type in the word song. So that way later I can just edit this in an actual plan and then I can link to a song in the database somewhere. So once I find it or I can search for it and then add song. But I don't ever want to do that in a template because a template I'm going to use every week. Songs change from week to week. So this is in a template. I just want to use static information so I don't have to recreate this every week. Um, here are some things that are static, though. I've actually added the names to these positions because it's the same people every week. So in the template, uh, in this communion template, I don't know why I have Frank and Sandy there because that was changing. But in this case, in this next season, you can probably keep that the same. Um, we can remove myself because I will not be there every week. And But Pastor David is the speaker, and so um, we will see that position filled just about every week. And then here is the communion uh, prep and let's go ahead and we're just going to add Alice in there because she typically handles that every week anyway and then if you have um, ushers who need to serve I like to schedule them in here however there's been no real enforcement of that but 
Um, I like to have all the volunteers who are serving for a particular week in services. That way we can all see it, all have access to it. And if a leader gets sick, there's no guessing on who's supposed to be where. Uh, it's all in services. So that's just my preference here. Um, so here are all the positions. Here are all the items in the plan. And that's pretty much how uh, templates flow. You'll see this basic layout when we go over to the, uh, the actual plan itself. Um, so that's plans. Here's the songs tab. Media tab, people. If you want to add a new person to the planning center, you got to go to the people tab or to services. If you want to add a new song, you got to go to services before it can go into a plan. Sorry, you have to go to the services tab and add the song before it can go into a plan. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on plans. And um, let's go ahead and add a plan. And I'll delete this. I just want to show you the process. We'll use divided worship set for the 29th. Uh, divided to worship set is basically how we're doing worship now with a set one and a set two. And now here is our plan. Now you notice on the left, we're going to have to go in and add names to the schedule who our vocal is going to be. So we're going to click on uh, the, these are four positions needed. You're not going to need that in the next season. You can probably tap that down to maybe two or three, um, depending on the structure check mark their names for right now we'll just do a test here with april and um, we'll hit accept now notice here it's showing you the uh, last use anywhere showing you when they were last uh, serving you can switch this around as well and filter or you can search for a name this list here is people who are already on a team together and i'll show you the team section in a moment but if there's somebody who doesn't normally who's not on the vocals team you can search for them here and add them but you can also go to your uh, gear icon here and then you are going to find your team and select the position that you want to add them to and here is where you can add them to your team um, and then they'll show up every time you go to add uh, this position the list of names will show up for you. Okay, uh, let's go back out. Uh, I wanted to show you something in Teams as well, um, especially if you're doing children's ministry and you wanted to know um, uh, kind of who does what. Let's see here. There was a way I go to reports mm, no that's not what it is let's go back out let's just go to the vocals team preferences okay so um, I guess we don't the vocalists don't have any preferences listed let me check and see with children's ministry team if they have any preferences listed and we need to go. We need to go out. People, teams, and I want to see all teams. And children's ministry. Here we go. Yeah, it looks like they don't have any preferences either. Well, we're going to skip that for now, but here is where you would typically see um, if that person wants to be scheduled twice a month, once a month, that kind of thing. You can also see it on their profile. Uh, so if we were to click Deborah's profile here and edit her preferences, you can see that she only wants to be on so many plans per month or so many plans per day. There's additional preferences here. Um, don't schedule Deborah when David is scheduled in the same plan. Schedule Deborah when David is scheduled in the same plan. Don't schedule Deborah when David is scheduled in any concurrent plan. And schedule Deborah when David is scheduled in any concurrent plan. So those are some of the preferences that you can use. Also, team preferences here. It says schedule as often as needed. Once a month, twice a month, three times a month. 
every other fourth week, every other sixth week. Um, so those are some of the things that you can do for your teams. Now, that was a brief overview of uh, Crash Course in <laughs> our plans, templates, scheduling. Um, one thing that I do want to mention, once you have the people set in your plan, you will want to send the scheduling emails because just because they're in a plan does not mean that they're actually scheduled, uh, that they know that they're scheduled for that plan. So you can see there's this little envelope here uh, for anyone, what we call prepared notifications. So what happens is you'll have to email and then you'll have to uh, send the prepared notifications, making sure these two boxes are checked. I'm going to go to three people, hit next. Here is the body or the text of the email that they're going to get, and then you can hit send. So that's how you can do that. The last way that I want to show you how to do that, the same thing. If you've done multiple plans, maybe you're scheduling four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks out, um, what you want to do is actually use the matrix. Um, this is The matrix is available in any plan or on the plans page. You can get to the matrix here or on the plans page, you can go to the matrix here or here, either place. Now this will give you multiple weeks and you can kind of see each week out planning in a linear view, uh, almost like Excel columns for each particular week. So you can plan your songs in and just kind of edit here what songs you're gonna do for multiple weeks. You can do the same thing for your volunteers, your vocal team. You can just um, go ahead and click on the number of people needed and start scheduling that way for each team. The advantage of doing it in the matrix is that you can send one email to everyone in the plan and it will contain all of the weeks that they're scheduled. So one email, multiple dates in the email that they can respond to. Instead of getting one email for every week that you're asking them to serve, they're going to get a uh, single email with multiple dates. You can hit email these people at the top. And um, same process, just like we were in the plan. You only want to send it to those who are pending. And prepare notifications. Next. And there's the text of the email. So that should do it. Any questions?